As indicated earlier on, I'll be talking to the Director General of the National Planning Commission, Tom Maluendo. Good evening, sir, and thank you for joining us here on Business Today. Good evening. Now, as the principal economic advisor for the President, how would you describe the state of economy currently? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the, uh, the, the economy. Um, I think we need probably to have more time to talk about the economy. Probably we don't do that. Um, I, would, I would want to describe the, uh, the Namibian economic development. I think uh, it's, it's a good story to tell. Uh, especially if you were to tell that story in uh, relation to what's happening in, in our region, to what's happening on the African continent. You would recall, for example, there was a time when nobody gave Africa a chance of uh, good economic development. Uh, people talk about a hopeless continent, uh, a dark continent, but more often than not, when you attend some international fora, uh, people talk about uh, a rising Africa, uh, where people expect that Africa should be the next continent where economic uh, growth is, is the highest or the fastest. Now, in that kind of setting, uh, Namibia, I think, have a good opportunity uh, to also ride on that uh, positive image about Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at the uh, latest economic performance on the sub-Saharan continent, African continent, uh, where, for example, the uh, economic growth for 2013 uh, was about 6%. Uh, and Namibia's economic growth also in that same year was about 5.5%. So we are quite, I think, in good company in terms of where we are uh, with our economic uh, development. Um, but I'm saying this also, given the fact that we know um, the, the economic growth on the continent is also taking place uh, against the background where internationally uh, some of the bigger emerging economies like China, India are not really as growing as fast as everybody thought they were going to be growing. Uh, and also where you have some of the largest uh, developed economies like the US or the Euro uh, area, which are also not really growing as fast as uh, one thought or one would hope it to be. And, and that is an important factor, uh, especially when you realize that um, most of our exports uh, mm -hmm. go to those economies. And therefore, if they're not growing as fast as we thought they would be, Obviously, our economic growth also here will be restricted in that, in that content. Um, but uh, as I said, we, we, we are quite happy that you know, even if you were to look at our economic growth in relation to what we have projected with an NDP4, uh, I think it's a good story to tell that we are on the, on the track. But is this growth translating into benefits to the locals? Well, it's... it's, it's, it's it's important that uh, economic growth is not just economic growth in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there must be a reason why you want to have economic growth. Um, if you have economic growth which does not translate into, for example, um, jobs, um, economic growth which does not even give you skills within the economy because of what people are doing, um, that kind of economy is not really what we're talking about. And that's why uh, within our NDP4, we said we have, for example, the three goals, which is economic growth, and then we also realize economic growth in itself is just not good enough, and therefore there has to be employment uh, accompanying that growth. And that's why we have the second goal being um, um, uh, employment creation. Now, to answer the question whether and then the economic growth, which I said we have got uh, five, 5% and we're projecting uh, 5.6, for example, for 2014. Um, I would say uh, it's a yes and no. The, the unemployment figure, um, the latest figure which was uh, released by the Statistics Agency, uh, which is 27.5%, to me that is still high. Um, uh, it's still high, and therefore we still need to carefully look at the uh, economic growth which comes from us having increased our productive capacity. Um, we may find that when we um, interrogate the growth where it's coming from, it's still coming from uh, mainly our uh, export, which mainly consists of mining uh, produce. And we know, for example, that most of those mining produce uh, 
uh, normally exported in, in raw form, and therefore it does not really uh, take up a lot of people to do uh, the build employment. Uh, so we still need to uh, uh, do more in some of the areas uh, where we can go get more economic growth, which is accompanied by employment creation as which well. Which are those areas that are necessary? Well, again, if I refer to our NDP4, uh, we, once we have agreed on the goals, the three goals, which is um, um, economic growth, um, employment uh, creation, uh, and the, the third one which be income uh, inequality to be reduced, mm -hmm. We also have said, now, if you want that sustainable economic growth, where would that come from? And therefore, we have to uh, look at all the sectors of the economy and look at where we think we can get that growth. Uh, so far, um, we have agreed that if we do more, uh, if we invest more in our manufacturing sector, for example, that is an area, I think, which we can get more employment. Um, Economies all over the world, uh, most of their employments are actually coming from areas where they are actually manufacturing certain things, they are doing certain things which are creating with their own people. Uh, and therefore, uh, one of the areas which we realize we, can, we need to mo do more in, in, in terms of investment is the uh, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is agriculture. Uh, we, we do have uh, investment going towards agriculture. You are aware, of, for example, of the green scheme, which we continuously have been uh, uh, promoting and which we are actually promoting. Uh, but we are also now saying uh, the time probably has come not only to, to produce um, agricultural products like maize um, and, and simply just you know, uh, leave it there. So we're saying, you know, can we also not go as far as actually creating or, or producing uh, commodities from our agricultural produce. So now this is now the agribusiness investment which we're encouraging. Mm -hmm. The third one is tourism. Um, it's a, a sector which we still believe that as Namibia, um, it, it, worldwide, we are still, I think, looked at as a good investment or, or, or destination for tourists. Um, our tourist figure has been increasing over the years. And that is not because we have necessarily marketed ourselves as a tourist destination. And therefore, if we were to, to spend more, to invest more in that sector by uh, not only uh, marketing ourselves as a good tourist uh, destination, but also maybe through also um, uh, increasing our product offering in the tourist uh, industry. Um, people come here because of the, uh, of the nice sceneries and all that, but maybe we can also add new products uh, which can attract more people to, do, to, mm -hmm. to, to come here. The fourth one, which is also probably more important uh, or, or equally important, is the logistics. Uh, you would have recalled um, at, at certain times when we said, given our geographic location where we are, uh, having a long coastline and having a number of landlocked neighbors, we are now enlarging the Wabash by Harbor which can attract more uh, bigger ships, uh, and then we become the logistic hub for, for, the, for, for the region. Mm. Mm. You made reference to that 5.5% uh, 5, 5 growth of the economy, and one of the key drivers, one sector that really did very well was the construction sector. Yeah. Where does that feature in the national development agenda? Um, you will also recall, um, when we, uh, three years ago, uh, when, he, when we came up with a program on, um, on TIPEC, which I hope we can talk about more yes, uh, later, sure. we did concentrate on infrastructure development mm -hmm. uh, because we did say um, if, we, if we want to be able to attract investors, and this is now whether it's foreign investors or local investors, investors will need some infrastructure. They need to have good road. They need to have good uh, rail. Um, they need to have efficient ports, like I just mentioned. Uh, and therefore, it's no surprising, therefore, that um, most of the, of the growth we've seen come from the uh, construction sector, mm -hmm. uh, simply as a result of the decision to invest more in infrastructure development. Is that, can that be sustained, that pace at which investment has been made in the construction sector or infrastructure development? Well, w when you say can it be sustained, 
I would, I would think that there will be a time when you can say, you look back and say, okay, now I think uh, the, the infrastructure which we have uh, constructed, which, in which we have invested, is probably sufficient now uh, to make the economy more competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, infrastructure development in itself is not, is not uh, a, a never-ending uh, thing. Although I also know that, you know, um, at times, even there comes a time when you think now you have got a good rail system, and then of course after 20, 30 years, you might have to reinvest in that particular infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I think over the NDP4 period, I think the, 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 the plan is to say we will have a, a infrastructure which can give us the, 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 the growth I think we, we, we are looking for.